and day. Good morning. Six. I noticed as I opened up my my notes for today, this is our last episode of the year. <gasps> what? I hate it. Because we get a little Christmas break. How? How is this year over already? I know. We're in a time warp. No, this went... This... I... I okay. I saw something the other day that said expires by, I don't know, something like 2021. And I was like, oh, this doesn't expire for another right. year. <gasps> and then I was like, wait a second. Yeah. This is already expired. <laughs> That's one of my worst favorite, least favorite things about the pandemic is just how like time, oh, we lost time. What even is time? <laughs> Who are we? Who are we? Why are we here? I. What does it all mean? <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh, figure God. out our, the meaning of life real quick. God, I really, I got so, I had a moment of just sadness when I saw this chart. I think it's floating around the internet or something. But it was a, it was a list of, of grades for school. And it said, if your child is in third grade, it yeah. said, here's the last year when he had mm-hmm. a normal school year. Yeah. Oh my God. Right. It, for like, some of them, for, if you're in third grade, you've never had a normal year. Not once. Can you oh my believe God, stolen childhood? Gonna, uh, I know. Uh, and like the moment we get like complacent or think like, okay, we're almost out of the woods, you know, then mm. the next variant comes yeah. along. We just Man. got a letter from his school. Like, you know, someone in Lincoln's class has COVID. <gasps> It's just like, ah, oh, nuts. Right. But thankfully, he is vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And yeah. shout out to the scientists. Shout out to science. <laughs> you know, I always think about Larry Brilliant when he was on yes. here. And yeah. I think about how grateful I am for that episode of our podcast that we did right before this really got crazy. Yeah. And yeah, how he's incredible. Yeah, he, was, he was really helpful in me understanding just, well, him and you, <laughs> well, well, understanding said, how serious it was. He just posted um, on Twitter or something that the Omicron variant mm-hmm. is the most infectious, uh, contagious oh. respiratory oh. illness in human history. Oh! <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Larry. Well, and if he says it, I'm like, uh-huh, right. fact. Fucking fact. That doesn't mean it's the worst one or the most it's deadly. The most, but right. It's most the most contagious. contagious, which means everybody. I mean, you're just going to fucking get it. I was like, Larry, shh. It's the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, look at us kicking off our holiday episode, last episode of right. the year with a little bit of gloom and doom. Uh, I know. Okay. Well, it's time for a little documentary roundup. Yes. Documentary roundup. Um, That's what I, I watched, see, you know, kind of like the more, you know, kind of thing that CBS, yeah, like right. the more, you know, yes. the documentary roundup. And then it's like a little bring. Yeah. Yes. Can we work on it. that? I see it. Work Where's on our that. music director? Yeah. Who's that? Who is that person? Um, so you. I watched a documentary about Kenny G, Sarah, and I know oh. what you're thinking, Susie, you've now <laughs> watched every documentary that, that has ever been made. You have run out of oh, topics. Oh, God. But so was it good? It was so good. Really? Yes. Tell me what was the most surprising. I feel like Kenny G is somebody who maybe gets hate but doesn't deserve it. <laughs> well, he, I mean, he gets like, not hate. hate but like slack. Like people give him like a hard time. People love teasing Kenny G. He yeah. Has a bit of a mockery. But like, okay, so the funny thing about it is. He's very likable, of course, and he's sort of in on the joke. Like, he gets oh. it. He's not... Oh, hang on. He, my tea's going off. Oh, I forgot okay. that I put tea, tea on time. a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, go get it. <laughs> tea kettle's going. <laughs> I love that it's, like, old-timey. It's so old-timey. Pardon the tea kettle. That's why it takes forever. And I was did like, Did we oh, also yeah. go back in time? I did not. I forgot to take my meds today, so who knows what else will go oh off in God. the middle of this Just session. Just get ugly. <laughs> it's tea time for Sarah. You. Yeah. Okay, um, back to Kenny okay. G. Okay, okay. I have so much to say, if you can believe it. Um, okay, but it was great because they had all these jazz scholars on that, like, can't stand him, of course, and, like, are so annoyed by him, which was very Why? funny. Well, okay, so... 
a lot of it is sort of like just an eye roll, you know, not a big deal. But right. I think that the fair thing that they said that is legitimate okay. is that Kenny G, if if you want to call him jazz, I mean, that's a stretch. But I mean, yeah. that is kind of, he doesn't really fit into a genre. I would say smooth jazz. Yeah, smooth jazz. But like... They were saying, listen, these black jazz artists, oh. this is a long tradition of like a white artist mm-hmm. just stylizing what black men or black artists have innovated and yes. then the white guy getting rich off of it. That's definitely it. There have been uh, so many black guys in the freaking New Orleans. You can walk down the street and probably yeah. find somebody who's as talented as Kenny G playing right there. And And I think the thing that really kind of grinds the thing in is that he doesn't really acknowledge those guys and okay Mm. this is how i saw it do you remember when elizabeth warren got that dna test and announced that she was like part native american for pete's sake yeah that was annoying and the native americans were like listen this being native american isn't about blood it's Mm. about culture and history and family and oral oral uh you know tradition and stuff yeah so, like, it kind of feels like that, where jazz is mm-hmm. a call and answer. Like, you're always supposed to be in conversation with, like, John Coltrane and the guys that built mm. it. You're, you're supposed... Because when you hear a jazz song, it yeah. has, like, a scaffolding, but you improvise. That's the nature of it. So you're supposed yeah. to be, like, using those techniques and kind of acknowledging all these guys that made yeah. it amazing. And then I thought this analogy was so cool. So the guy was like, okay. He was like trying to figure out why he's so annoyed with Kenny G. And he's like, okay, imagine. So there's basketball, right? There's LeBron James and he's like amazing. And he, he has such talent and he works so hard and he makes it perfect. And then you have like the Harlem Globetrotters, right? Yes. And they are so fun and they do all these cool tricks and they spin the ball and they entertain and it's amazing. That, you know, is Kenny G. But also now imagine if everyone preferred... The Globetrotters. <laughs> Aye, that is a really good analogy. It right? really makes it make sense. And everyone's Because it like, is kind of like... But uh, I feel like... Okay, you're right. Because it doesn't matter what we classify him as. It's him profiting off of it. Right. It, yeah, it's the... Because, like, who cares? In my mind, I was like, yeah, but he... Uh, I think maybe he is kind of seen as a novelty act. Yeah, it doesn't matter when you're sitting in... Uh, you can call me whatever the fuck you want, sitting in my nice-ass house and my, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Like, yeah. Well, so then, in the documentary, the filmmaker said, you know, what do you say to these people that kind of, like... Let's just say you're, like, p- privileged and that because you're white, yeah. you were able to make this yeah. huge career, but all these black guys couldn't. So he, he goes, you know... I never really thought about it, which I could not believe. What do you mean? Right? You never thought about it. And he seemed sincere. Like he was sort of like, I never thought about the color of my skin because you don't have to, Kenny. Oh. Um, but he said, let me think. So would Clive Davis have signed me if I were a black saxophonist? Hmm, probably. I think he would have. Would I have been played on pop radio? Probably not, Mm -hmm. right? Because black artists are always relegated only to urban stations, to R&B stations, whereas the white artists can make it on both. Yeah, They can be on pop, they can be on R&B. And so, like, he goes, you know, I probably did, that was privilege, I probably did benefit from that. Uh, You think? (laughs) Oh, I was like, probably, I I don't, I, I... I don't understand what the resistance to admitting that you, there's privilege is. I think that I cracked the that? case. Tell me, please. Because, listen, this is bonkers. At the beginning, they said, what do you love, what do you love best about music, right? He oh. goes, what do I love best about music? I, you know, I don't really love music. <gasps> <gasps> what? Listen. Is he a fucking alien? He goes... I realize he just loves excellence. He's really talented. He's a very good oh, player. But okay. he didn't it could have been anything. He just happened to Is play he the on the sax. spectrum? <laughs> no, I think he's on the white spectrum. <laughs> Where Fucking these guys a. think because they practice really hard 
and they work really hard that then it wasn't privilege. I mean, this is, we all have this blind spot. Okay, I see. So he put, oh, he doesn't see how he's starting it, getting a head start over here. Right. And has something like, and and doesn't have to jump over the hurdles in the race and other people in the other lanes have hurdles. He just didn't because he never really had to think about that. Man. I just, I like, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if I've seen it in women as much. The, I'm trying to think of a time where a woman, I was trying to talk about a woman and her privilege and she was like blind to it. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot. I know a lot of white guys like this who really do work yeah. hard and you can't say that they don't, but just really think that that's all it takes and not realizing there weren't any hurdles in the way. Yeah. Okay. Man. So I, the that last... shocks me because I really feel like in the jazz, that is so, uh, I feel like that's not a music community where it's predominantly white. Right? No, no, and they really not, do not. Most of them really get annoyed with him. Of yeah, but like, I can't believe he's never been told this or shown this before. That's like, what seemed like till, come on now. until the documentary in 2021 or what? He was shielded from that? Okay. Okay. Right. And you had that long curly hair and nobody said anything? He did say, well, he is Jewish. I mean, it's a Jew fro, but, well, he, I, but like, he did say, like, listen, I get the joke. I know that if I cut my hair, my career would be over. <laughs> like, really? So, yeah, like he knows that it's all like a package of nonsense. Oh my God, in my mind, he had already, he's cut his hair. It's kind of like Alex Trebek shaving his mustache. I feel like everybody was just doing that. Like, like oh, Michael they're... Bolton did. Maybe you're thinking of him. <gasps> I'm thinking Michael Bolton. Yeah. You're 100% yeah. correct. <laughs> and that, thank God, because that mullet, that was. <laughs> It's funny in my brain. Now I have to really wow. Put those two <laughs> split screen those guys for well, a sec. And like Kenny G does all this stuff. Like um, he does circular breathing with which, if yes. you're not familiar, is like where you just breathe while you're playing, which is so yeah. hard to do. Yeah. Um, and wow. he's in the Guinness World Book of Records for holding the note the longest. And that was another example of like the globe trotter oh. thing, where he yeah. like every jazz musician can do circular breathing, but. He does it for like a party trick and for like a Guinness World Record. You know what I mean? It, yeah. Oh man, when he okay. was younger, he was fucking cute. I mean, he did have a, a little bit of sex appeal there. I mean, we're talking young, young, young. I'm looking at this like, like first album that he did. He's got like this curly hair, like <laughs> tossed to the side kind of thing. You I like to run your I'm fingers through that young jungle. Kenny G all of a sudden, <laughs> what? Yes. Is- happening right now i must be ovulating you, this is yeah, unusual right. sarah hold on oh. let me google michael bolton <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious okay the last thing i'll say about kenny g is this is so freaking cool in china at quitting time like you know 5 p.m in all the town squares around china they all chose and choose to play a Kenny G song called Going Home as like, hey, it's quitting time <laughs> on the public speakers in the town square. So it's like I'm, constantly on. Kenny and G every day. They were saying like, what do you think it is? And the scholars were like, well, you know, Kenny G songs aren't protesting anything. They're not like right. making any statements. <laughs> so it's like the music of consent. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> then they had this Chinese guy on. I think he was a music scholar. And he said, well, um, in China, they the traditional music doesn't use the tones fa or ti. You know, don't, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Oh. They don't use fa and ti. Like in their national anthem, those tones aren't there. And is also not really present in Kenny G's music. So it sounds similar oh, to what they're used to. Why? Isn't that wild? I don't, what, well, it's just what? like sort this of a style of music that doesn't use those notes very often. But, like, I didn't know that, and that's really fun. I that's so fun. I don't yeah. know anything about music. <laughs> well, you, you know what you, you like. You do. That's all you, that counts. But, like, when we were reading the book on uh, How to Change Your Mind that talked about psychedelics, and it talked about, yeah. there was a part that I highlighted, and I, like, wrote in, in notes, like, Susie has this. 
And it was like a different way to hear tones of music. Like you hear, oh, I can't remember what it is, but I know you have this 100%. When, it, when we, we were in our book club meeting and you said like, do you have any of you guys have these sort of experiences like transcendence? And I had said church, but we also were talking about music. I mean, a lot yeah. of people just have that when they listen to music and they feel that sense of like awe and mm. whatever. So cool. But I, I don't feel about it. the notes. Well, and I don't feel it when I listen to Kenny G's, but maybe Not some people really. do. I think it's exactly right. It's like that music of consent. It's, it's the off white paint, like of, yeah. <laughs> and, and like right. khaki pants. It's and just fine. Helvetica. Yes. And, or right. Times New Roman of it doesn't just challenge fine. you. It's just right. soothing, and yeah. it's almost like it's not there. Yes, it's not there. You wouldn't even notice if it weren't. Wouldn't you love to listen to Kenny G and smoke some dad grass, Susie? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I was thinking about. You know, it's funny. I was like writing a commercial for dad grass okay, the other day in it. my mind <laughs> as I was. I was just like, you know. Getting mellow. Are you looking for the mellow high? <laughs> right. I, you know, I come to my mom for a lot of things. Advice and weed. <laughs> <laughs> right. For real, because you don't want to be too damn high, right? No. You want to be just chill. Mellow. And thanks to Dadgrass, it's possible for all of us because these babies can be shipped anywhere in the country. They are TSA approved. They are 100% organic pre-rolled joints, very low in THC, so it's not going to make you kooky, and high in CBD, so you're just getting a nice clear head. Just a nice, mellow feel. I mean, what is that? And let's talk about the packaging. So cool. Like the coolest. Really cute and funny. And like with a wink, which I love. I love it. Makes me want to like roll it up in my white sleeved shirt. Yeah. (laughs) Like Schneider. Yeah. The handyman. I mean, you guys, okay, last call before Christmas. Get this deal. Stocking stuffer. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash brain candy. Go to dadgrass.com slash brain candy for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash brain candy. Such a cute gift. Yes. Or for yourself. I mean, who are we kidding? Yeah, man. Okay. Anyway, Kenny G was great. I loved it. Um, and now you know. Yes. I'm into uh, the music documentaries. You've been like oh big into God, music I'm, documentaries. Lately. I can't stop. Yeah. I'm a little bit behind you. I think I'm just now starting to get into the sports ones. So talk to me in six months and I'll be <laughs> right, listening to the music right. ones. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'll spare you guys, but for some episodes coming up, I, I watched the ZZ Top one. I watched DMX one. Oh, I mean, cool. Look at you. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on top of it. I love it. I do the work so you don't have to. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on. I had read this. I wondered if you'd be into it. It sounded like something you would like. Um, in the New Yorker, they did this article about the new luxury vacation is like paying a ton of money mm-hmm. and then ha- like they call it get lost where they just take you yeah. somewhere in the world, dump you there, and then you have to like get out in a certain amount of time on your own. Well, so it's like an the, escape room, but I fucking love this. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Tell me this what, is what you I would, would love want. about it. <laughs> this is my dream vacation. For real, I am this person. I am who this is made for. Tell me about Susie. What that would all feel like I want to, to do is. <sighs> I get this. I'm totally into this. Mm-hmm. I want to be put in like a safe survival situation. Oh, okay. Like, but also, okay, let's think about what a vacation is. Mm -hmm. A vacation is a break from the norm. Yeah, check that box. You know, and you get to experience a life that you don't get to maybe have on the regular. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that, you know how whenever we talk about crazy, stupid shit that somebody did, you're always like, is this a white guy? And we're like, yep. Because (laughs) you're like, you're so privileged that at this point you're like, okay, how do I like push the limits for myself? Yeah. I think it kind of falls into that category of like you 
a, a, a you know, you don't want to. You have to simulate difficulties. Yeah. And it almost like experience something that's not your day to day. Oh, how, uh, uh, like, Kenny used to always laugh. Uh, Kenny from the challenge used to always uh, tease me about my love for camping because he was like, mm-hmm. why would I want, like, want to go pretend that I'm homeless, you know, (laughs) like, and people who have maybe struggled with housing, don't go camping. Like, it's like a privilege to get to go live outside. That's true. Okay. So I feel like it's kind of like this, where it's like, oh, how privileged you get to go do a survivally, like, you get to struggle for, because that's like the opposite of what you normally do. Yeah, because they say... No tent, no phone, and no matches. This is essentially um, what I did. I paid to do this, Susie. This is what I did in, Den- in Colorado. Right. <laughs> but it was safe. Yeah. Like, you didn't actually feel like... But, I mean, it is kind of I mean, dangerous I had, still. I had a guide there, but... Yeah, but, like, if you have a snake encounter or something... Yeah. There, I was also hurt. told... I was also informed two days afterwards, oh, yeah, there are definitely mountain lions and right. you won't hear them coming and they'll just attack you. And we were sleeping with no tent, no nothing. Like, Would you have gone if you had known that? You probably would yeah. have still. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, yeah. It's so so about, tell me what they do there. So they they just stick you in the middle of nowhere. It's like somewhere really spectacular though it's like iceland and then you're near the tectonic plates or whatever and so cool and then they're like okay see you in three days or something and you have to find your way out and then after you're done you get to go to a like real fancy pampering place this is great that's ideal for you ideal My- <laughs> this is like fifteen thousand th- bucks or something <whistles> yeah like all the tech bros do this yeah yeah, I get. Right. Oh, that makes sense. Right. See, <laughs> right, you were right. It's that. It's. I mean, and I think it, it. There's two different categories. There's like the people who want to do this. Like I'm more into the. Like I don't need the fancy dinner afterwards. Like. More into you like love the, the satisfaction of yeah doing it yeah and I don't need like the whole like nobody needs to arrange it. I'll just go out there and then you know camp whatever but i can arrange it i can see these guys needing it's like they've they need like oh this now that you said it's the tech guys i can picture who does this and it's like the guys who don't think that they're this is the new age alphas Mm -hmm. having to prove their alphaness yeah, in an it's like old Joe school Rogan, way. Man. Yes, it uh, is. okay. See, I'm more into the eco challenges. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get this, but as soon as you said tech bros, I can see what kind of person does this, and now I'm just like, oh, I'm annoyed now. Because <laughs> these are the people theory, who don't respect like nature. I think. Oh, yeah. These are the Everest, the people their... hiring Everest guides to go up. Mm-hmm. This is this is the I want to climb Everest group. Right, I get it. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. Now I'm mad. Oh, <laughs> wow. That <laughs> took that, a turn. That took a turn. I'm mad at yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, essentially, right. I guess. And you have like a little button. If you have an emergency, you can push it. Kind of like alone, really. That's yeah. True. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be into it, but I guess there's a market for this sort of Do you of think Adam again. would be into it? No. Really? Well, maybe he would. I should ask him. I would. Yeah. Know. We're going to need to ask him. He said he would? No, I'm saying, like, you think oh. he would? Well, I think if I would, I think he would. That's usually how things go around here. True, but you have more of that thing where you, like, really get excited about figuring stuff out. Like, he likes doing that, but you get more of, like, the rush. Yeah, I do. <laughs> He's very calm. Yeah. But I don't <sighs> know. I'll ask him. I'll get the scoop. Yeah, I'm going to need to know that. Hmm. Okay. I know you don't want to do that. No, that doesn't appeal to me. But I know what you're saying. I get why it would be satisfying. It's just not worth it to me. Yeah. What did you oh. think of the um, Birds Aren't Real update that I posted oh, on? Our- what update? <laughs> this is on our social. Um, the New York Times did a story. Taylor Lawrence, who's a great journalist, oh, yeah. she did this story about how the birds aren't real 
movement <laughs> was like an intentional hoax uh -huh. to, to teach people about like misinformation and conspiracy theories. Yeah, that then turned into a misinformation conspiracy theory. I mean, do you think? Do you think there are people who believe this? Maybe a couple. I don't think a lot of people. The, I think it, the it became... The people marching with the signs, you think they're in on it? No, they hoax. were in on it. Yeah, that was all okay. by design. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they had a whole plan going on. So Did it work? Okay, so just if you're not familiar, we talked on the show about this birds aren't real weirdness where Sarah had seen like a billboard or something yeah. that said what birds the fuck? aren't real. And so she looked into it and was like, oh my God, these people think birds aren't real, that they were like killed in the 70s and then replaced with dr drones <laughs> from the government. And we were, I mean, it sort of was like the flat earther thing where we were like, oh my God, like everyone's yeah. gone mad. And yeah. while that is true, everyone has gone mad. Um, in this case... The movement was designed to be like a hoax. I hate the person who did that. Really? I don't like, because I don't think that it, it did what it meant to do. Did it? Okay. I'm just they annoyed. Would... I'm not any more. Uh, here's what we would have to, I would, I want to know if somebody who wasn't aware of misinformation before is now aware of misinformation through this like what did this really do mm -hmm. i mean a hoax feels better than a political statement <laughs> right i'd rather it be a hoax than someone actually thinking birds aren't real yeah but i mean i no i mean like um they're doing this to make like a hoax is like, oh, we're making a joke. You know, it feels like a joke. Whereas like, oh, we're doing this to make a statement. You know, we're trying to teach a lesson in here. I think we're that's what they were doing. Yeah, I don't that. You don't like that. I feel like you failed because okay. I feel like you made a. Um, yeah, you showed how the how misinformation, how people believe stuff. Now what? We already fucking knew that. Mm -hmm. people believe shit since the, i don't know i'm a therapist maybe i just understand that like i'm like mad at those people because you feel like it exploits the vulnerable yes mm -hmm. i mean even even i even think about the amount of energy that i spent on rolling my eyes at these ridiculous people yeah is they annoying. wasted it, your time yeah that's like okay. annoying to me that like there are better ways to you're not proving anything that we didn't already fucking know. Mm hmm Right? Okay. Yeah. I guess I can see it both ways. It depends on what they do now with it. Yeah. Um, they, they seem to not have terrible intentions. It was sort of like... It originally was a joke. And then when he saw people sort of embracing it, he was like, okay, let me, let me do something intentional here. And he was like a method actor for four years. He never broke character until he came out in this article. Oh, wow. Oh, so he, wow. Like he was insistent that he believed this and that it was real. But he did have an awareness about like the potential for a problem. So anyway, you get the gist. Birds, birds are real. Yeah, I'm still annoyed. <laughs> I just don't like fake hoaxes or like, I just don't like a hoax. You know why? I like Actually, I do know why. Cause I'm too gullible. Oh, that's what this is. I feel like I've been tricked and I don't like to be tricked. Wow. Like you take it personally. Yeah. Cause like I didn't fall for believing birds are, are not real, but I fell for believing that there are people who believe the birds aren't real. And I don't like that. Yeah. Well, because like, if people believe the earth is flat and we're on the back of a fucking turtle. Yeah. You think that that seems like, oh, okay, I understand how people would think that that's a thing. But, well, oh, but no, people thinking birds aren't real is crazy. No. To, to me, that's what's angering is that the reason it's believable is because we're in this dystopian situation yes. where 
conspiracy theories are rife because people's lives are so miserable and they want to believe there's some sort of conspiracy oh, when really it's just like the government and the system is rigged and it's always been and that's the way it yes. is. <laughs> you know, like I, I, Merry I, can, Christmas. I can see why <laughs> conspiracy yes. theories are appealing to people yes. like that because then you think, well, okay, then it's these oh. elaborate. You know what? Do you think with the, you know, you've talked about on here about how we've moved away from like organized religion into more spirituality because people do want that, the you know, questions answered and those kind of big things. Do you think we could seeing the rise of conspiracy theories for almost that same reason? A similar. Probably, yeah. Yeah, like the flip side to that coin of. Yeah, like people are looking for meaning. Yes. But then they're also looking for, like, why is the world so yes. messed up? Yeah. Yes. And in the same way we were like, oh, it's just the big guy in the sky, you know, 100 years ago. Now they're like, oh, it's probably just the government, you know, and it's, like, easier to wrap your mind around, like, yeah, this is a conspiracy theory. Then, you know, it's, like, the system, it, but whatever it is. But it's like, yeah, it is the government, but just in more boring ways that <laughs> benefit rich people and stuff. Like, yeah. It, they oh they don't have place. time for drones, bird <laughs> drones. Right. They don't need bird drones to get everything accomplished. Yeah. We have those phones that we carry around all the time right. tracking. Right. Us. Oh, my Lord. Oh, God. I'm wearing a bra that's not a third love bra right now. <gasps> I think I need that to fucking take it off. That is tragic. That is a mistake. I have to take it off. She's taking take it, it off. taking it off. It's too much. It's too much. Well, I'll tell you what is just the right amount, and that is stamps.com. Coming in yes. clutch for me day in and day out. Especially this time of the year. Hello. Oh, like, do you know how many times I've avoided having to go to the post office yes. or even leave my house, period, because of stamps.com? What are you waiting for? Just that driveway you got to face alone would be reason enough for me to like, <laughs> be like, yeah, no, nope, I'm out. Stamps. We did get our, our driveway re-raveled. You'll be happy oh, to good, know. Good. Um, but yeah, it's treacherous. So like if you want convenience and you want to save money, stamps.com is the answer. You can ship anything you want to anywhere you want and get discounts on UPS rates and USPS rates. Ideal. Okay, so just try it. Like, do make this like your New Year's thing. Like, okay, I'm going to get my life in order. I'm not going to have to go to the post office. Save time and money this holiday season with Stamps.com. Sign up with a promo code BRAINCANDY for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code BRAINCANDY. Yes. I had to do some work for my mom to get some, like, papers filed for her residency and things like that. Stamps.com made it so... uh, you know how those things mm-hmm. are kind of designed to like be yeah. hard so that you don't do it yes. and then the time passes and then like you have to pay all the... I know that they're designed for that. I was like, ha ha, no problem. Yeah. Did everything I needed to do with the self-addressed... St- you have to put like a self-addressed envelope in there with it. So I was able to like self-address it, print it out. It was like so easy. If so. if you guys hear any hammering, uh-huh. it's just a bunch, literally, of Amish men on my roof, giving us a new roof. Are Boy. they really Amish men? Yeah, didn't I tell you that? Yeah, but I thought you were kidding. Oh no, no, they're Amish. Oh, Why would cool. I kid? <laughs> Why would Susie, I, I don't know. I thought you were just like saying like like. Here, I thought you know what it was. You. My mind, my mind went to Fiddler on the Roof instead of. Um, oh my gosh! It's Jebediah. <laughs> I just showed her. There's three. Abraham I don't know how many and Jebediah on Susie's roof. <laughs> one of them is named Abe. One oh, of, I knew it. One of them is named Noah. Okay. I could have guessed maybe an Ezekiel in there. No, but I think there is even an Adam, you know, like they pepper uh-huh. in the, you know. Yes. New Testament. Or no, that's Old Testament. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but yeah, they are the best in, in they, the area. Yeah. <laughs> I under, I get it. It's woodworking like the, that's who you want Con, c- construct building they don't hammer nails and Very. you're gonna get it done in like the with quality craftsmanship <laughs> none of this like you know how we were talking about long johns Susie and i uh, i yeah. sent a picture to Susie the other day and she was like oh my gosh where'd you get those long johns that like waffle print i'm looking for that yeah and i was like nah you don't want these this is like fake like long johns it looks like it but it's like the modern twist essentially just waffle print 
fabric. Yeah. Bullshit. So I feel like these <laughs> this, these Amish roofers are going to be the old timey wool long johns of the construction world <laughs> versus the you know seven dollar old navy long john shirt that <laughs> is not keeping anybody warm and yes. may not last a season. Yeah, those oldies, the ones like from back in the day, those are the real deal. But now everyone's yeah. just faking it. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to ask you this. Okay. I'm sure you've heard of these. You know, like people have plunge pools. Yeah. Like the really deep. Cold dip. Of- yes, 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 yes. yes. And yeah. even like I think people have like plunge tubs outside and stuff. Yep. I don't know, like cold water tubs. Yeah. Um, but like the jury- Very popular in Finland and Sweden. Okay. And yeah, they sort of start they kind their of pair day with. Yeah, they pair with the, uh, well, they don't really have to do it in the dips. They just go and jump out in the water. Right. But it's kind of like the the, the sauna cold plunge pairing. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's like a thing. Yeah, you did. I and like in, that. I believe it's in Finland where the ratio of saunas to people, it's like a one-to-one or a two-to-one. It's that, like, they're so popular. And like business meetings are conducted in saunas. So they get hot and then they get cold? Or do yeah. they do it be- the other way? They cold get hot, then cold. So hot what? to like like purge Open everything out of your system. And then cold to whoosh, seal it all back up and like freshen up the body. I don't freaking know. I don't do this shit. Okay, just, just curious. I wanted to know what you think though. Because like the jury's out on, you know, medically what mm-hmm. these things can do. Some people claim they can cure depression and right. all sorts of things. And then the medical community uh, sort of like, uh-huh. well, it might be a placebo. We don't really know. What do you think? Okay. I do think that there are things that there are elements of this that do work. Like we do see that if you stimulate the vagus nerve with cold, that you can cause calming sensation. So it's very helpful for clients who are experiencing like high emotional reactivity. So mm-hmm. like I'm having a panic attack or I'm like... You know, that yeah, kind of like when you need to go out like and have fresh out. air. Like, That's what yes, that is, really. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's kind of like, so if you take a cold pack and you put it right on your chest and you take some deep breaths with the cold pack there, it's something about stimulating that vagus nerve with the cold. In the same way, um, you know, when you splash cold water on your face and you, didn't we, wasn't there something that we talked about with ducks and cold water mm-hmm. and... There's something, and we had ta- we had talked about it. How it's kind of that same reaction of splashing cold water on your face. Yeah, that and rings I a bell. know, like, so I think that there is a biological system in there for cold being a shock to the system that changes our. It like takes you out of whatever, you know, like um, if I am a. Some some really helpful technique for somebody who's self-harming is to plunge your hand or any whatever into cold water and to use cold water to change the physiological state you're experiencing in a way that like, it's like pulls the system out of that. Well, and if the logic of the... Um cutting or whatever the harm is yeah yes is that you get the chemical dopamine or whatever yes, yes. that feels pleasurable and yes. soothing then it it would do that with a really cold Correct. yes it yeah. would you that's why we use that as a replacement and it's like mm-hmm. do that and it feel it's like that you know that and it's the same it's a it's a state change it's like something it's a shock to the system that then like, you know, I just always imagine Cher slapping whoever it is going, snap out of it. Yeah. It's like that. Like, the, <laughs> yeah. whatever is happening, like Cher is inside of you is going, <laughs> slap out of it, snap out of it. And then you're like, oh, okay, I'm good. I so think- I think if you look at that and then, and then take that and pair it with like a daily dunk into a cold plunge that it's enough to kind of you know what it really does it forces you into the present yeah well and it keeps you present oh in the new york times i think that's a thing the article about these cold cold water communities or whatever they're called one of the ladies said she had suffered i think she had lost a child or something and she was saying like when you're in the water 
you can't think yeah. of anything besides how cold you are, and it's a break yeah. for her brain, you know? Yes. Yeah. And so anecdotally, I think we can all see why this would be beneficial. Yeah. But I think the the reluctance is um, from doctors who might say, okay, maybe it does help you at that moment. But to, to say it cures depression, that's right. a leap that they're not willing to say. But Right. I mean, for these people... I think it is something that... And I think we need to change how we talk about that it cures depression thing of like, I think it needs to be this helps the symptoms yeah, of depression yeah. and that's because that's great. all is, yeah because these things are underlying and can be there and pop up throughout your lifetime and to say like and then what happens is if you think oh i'm cured and then later your all those feelings come back it can be very hard to yeah like instead you could that. think of it as like a tool in your toolbox for when you experience those yes those. in the same i kind of think the same way that they uh that Michael Pollan talked about mushrooms in how they help somebody who has depression in the book, uh, uh, How to Change Your Mind, because he talked about how for some people they see a reduction in symptoms for about six months, but it might be something that you'd have to repeat. In the same way, you could see a reduction in symptoms in that day, but a cold plunge is not going to cure you of depression for, you know, you, you have to do it, keep it up. Mm-hmm. In the same way, an exercise routine can cure you of depression. Mm-hmm. Anything that you're doing that that normalizes the ba- the chemical balance in your brain mm-hmm. is going to help. Right. Yeah. yeah. To me, it seems I will obvious. also say it makes your hair really great. The cold water. Oh. Yeah. I do a cold seal at the end of my shower. Yeah. It it. Night and day difference. Too. Really, night and day. Night. Okay, I'm gonna and do that. Day with frizz. It seals the cuticle. Yeah. Because the cold water, like hot water, opens it up, and so cold water seals it. Yeah. And it'll make it shiny. It make it. I do like a cold water dunk, like scrunch at the okay. end. And I'm gonna it do really that because I I yeah. have heard that. Yeah, it's that I really I am a big fan of. I need all the help I can get over here. Okay, I read an article about the show Snapped. Have you oh, is that the one where women kill? Yes. Yeah. It was so interesting because this one was in thecut.com or uh, NY Mag, I think. Yeah. And it was about how this show, it's been on so long, and it was originally meant to be like, these are not... This is a reminder. Take your meds. Oh, my Alexis God. Me stop She's it. Gonna, Alexa, stop. She's going to remind me to take my meds. <laughs> God, that was great. It's so funny. I, 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 I know that that's programmed, but it's, it's, and it's at a time where I'd never have any sessions, but twice it, it's happened on the show. And then when I was talking to my supervisor and there was a bunch of other therapists, and they hey, all were like handy. dying laughing. They were like, oh, if I, that is the most therapist thing I've ever seen right. in my life. I'm like, and they were like, are you going to fucking go take your meds or what? Right. <laughs> That's like, a good point. I'm just sitting here like going to keep talking. I know. I'm like, oh. Okay. okay. I, so, <laughs> I think they might be. <laughs> okay. So originally snapped was Sarah Sater beds was... Yeah. Meant to be like very unsympathetic people who, women who, quote, Mm -hmm. snapped and sort of like were basically behaving in the way we think men do. Yeah. And they even said in the beginning, like, this is not sort of like the domestic violence, like um, defense type of situations. These are actual, you know, wicked people. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, it's been on so long, and the bottom line is that women do not kill very often. And right. almost always when they do, it is because they yeah. feel like they have no other option. I was like, that's, like, the premise for all of the ones I feel like I've, see- I've yeah, seen I've Yeah, because now of. they've they've had to do that. And oh, so, my. There aren't enough female killers yeah, instead for of it just to being be. Like, the show's over. They're like, we need more killers. How many fucking shows can we actually make about male killers? Right. Like, we've, we have There's spin-offs. a whole genre. Right? There's an entire <laughs> we genre. Have spin-offs. <laughs> right. Like, I'm not kidding. They've taken the Marilyn Man, or not Marilyn Manson, the, the uh, Charles Manson, and they made multiple spin-offs of right. and we can't we're like running out of material for yeah and so now they've been oh 
reduced to basically what's the word where you exploit they're exploiting domestic <gasps> violence victims yeah, they are and making them seem like cuckoo crazy when oh really God. it's like they're victims themselves i heard a story i think i watched it on this i watched it on a show i don't where i don't remember where i saw this but it was a real story about a woman whose boyfriend was murdered and put in a oil barrel or oil drum or something like that. I don't know if it was her husband or boyfriend or something like that. But then, and it was like all the craziness that happened. He was like a serial killer. It was a whole thing. But then it like destroyed oh, her life. Oh, he's the killer. He's the, no, he was a victim. He, her boyfriend was one of the victims of... This serial oh, the killer. serial killer. Okay. Then they turned it, like the media and everything, turned it into the media circus that, you know, finding bodies in an oil drum would get turned into. Yeah. And her being the partner of a victim ruined her life. Like she got, you know, calls for interview, all this stuff, and like could never escape it, could never heal, could never do the things. She ended up, I don't know what I saw this on, but she was like being interviewed in a what looked like the most rundown apartment and like she's like yep i lost all my money we we lost our house we like all this stuff because of what the media like did to the story of the victims afterwards and then she was like left with nothing like they just it leave this like vacuum and you know she's like people are profiting off of this people are writing books about this God, where the fuck did I see that? Yeah, it that some concerns show. me because, you know, I do research on these guys and like I do not want to perpetuate what I think right. happens sometimes when you have a profitable genre. Yeah. And then people just want to like bleed it dry. So yeah. for lack of a better term. Right. No well, I also thought it was funny that the magazine was in the cut. So right. it's like, wow, yeah. all the murder references. Yeah. And they like... Typically, it's like the women are crazy, money hungry, or scorned. That was the thing. But then now it's like, oh, but a lot of them are also, by the way, yes. victims yeah. of domestic and sexual abuse. Ugh. Um, so that's not great. Just something to think no. about if you're thinking about watching Snapped. And it's on the Oxygen Network, which is Oprah's network, which I also <sighs> don't love too. I don't like that that's even a show. No, I like don't either. Snapped also implies that, like, we all, like, and I know we do, like, you know, that, like, and I've heard guys reference that and be like, oh, I don't want to be, like, snapped. And, like, you know, use it to become, like, a thing that Even people, though 90% of murders are committed yes. by men. And I don't want to be like, oh, I don't want this to become, like, statistics. Right. That say you are, will kid, you right. are the perpetrator. Yeah. Like, I mean, fucking A. Right. Like, they can still manage to make it like women are hysterical even when yes. they're never the ones doing this. Yes. I don't love it. I'll tell you what I do love, though. Ritual vitamins and protein powder. Here's the thing. You know how you end up quitting taking your vitamins and quitting your protein shakes because they taste like crap? Well, <laughs> you will not have that problem with Ritual. The vitamins smell and taste like mint, so you don't get that weirdness when you take them or an upset stomach because they're time-released. And the protein powder is great because it's got this handcrafted vanilla flavor, like proper the good stuff. And uh, it has a pea protein, sustainably grown, really yummy, and that way you'll want to keep taking it and you'll stay on track and get the nutrients you need to do the work that you need to do. So why not shake up your ritual to try to make trying something new less scary? Ritual offers a money back guarantee if you're not 100% in love. Okay, what do you have to lose? Plus, our listeners get 10% off during your first three months. Just visit ritual.com slash brain candy and add essential protein today. That's ritual.com slash brain candy. This is a great idea for the new year. Just get on track. Do like one little habit every day you're in business. Um. Okay. Women just aren't murderers like that. Re why do you think that is? That is such a good question. Like, <sighs> is it socialization? You know, we 
teach women to be compliant and submissive and sweet and nurturing? Or do you think that's just how we are? <sighs> it's so hard to Or is it just know. testosterone? <laughs> I mean, you know, I I was one of the things that I wanted to talk about in the episode where I talked about the alpinist, that climber yeah. guy. One thing that stood out when his friends were talking and and it they were talking about how he just has this like no fear and he just, you know, pushes himself to limit. There's definitely a male trait to, you know, I'm all about, you know, women can do the same things guys do, but the, men are definitely pro, they have that, the that testosterone thing. does something to that 21 to 24 year old or 18 to 24 year old dude, where it's just like this sense of invincibility mm -hmm. and, you know, and I could see a biological uh, advantage to that. It like, you know, makes us push forward as a species and explore areas that we've never explored before. And, you know, we need that. But man, I cannot relate. I was just watch like, I just, there's this little sense of fear and danger that I think women have. You know, it's the same thing we discussed when, when we were talking about the skateboard documentary about women who skateboard and they were talking about women skaters there's that a, there's a little bit of a hesitation there mm -hmm. that's diff that male skaters don't have but then women skaters are more fluid and more it looks more you know whatever but elegant and graceful yes but there's this thing that guys have that's just this testosterone i just don't know what it is um that kind of reminded me i had just read this book i have been talking about it like over the last few months because i have read like snippets but i finally got to mm -hmm. read the whole thing it's called mother of invention and yeah. it, i had mentioned like the wheeled luggage and how men yes. didn't want wheels on luggage and whatever so like i wanted to read a couple things from it that were fun but then also um one main thing that i was like blown away by oh i so, can't wait when they were talking about the invention of grocery carts and how like before it was more specialized, like you'd go to your butcher, you'd go to the yes. vegetable. So then once there was like an actual grocery store where everything was, like people weren't really used to buying a lot at once. So like a cart wasn't a thing. And so they had, they invented the cart, but then like nobody wanted to use it because it right. seemed like you were weak and that like, yeah. Why would you need a cart? Like you're handicapped or something? I had the same experience when the guy in Home Depot asked me for a, if I needed a cart and I was carrying all the boxes. I was like, no, no I'm fine. <laughs> Can't you see my work boots and overalls? <laughs> no. Oh my God. Can't, don't you, can't you see my big dick energy? Sarah's, no, I don't need a fucking cart. Sarah's you part of the patriarchy cart. problem. Yes. But continue. They had to hire models. No. To take the carts and walk around the grocery store <gasps> and like act like they were shopping to convince people it was like, okay. If this isn't proof <laughs> that like monkey see, monkey do kind of thing, that we yeah. just need, like we are so easily. Yeah, like even, you know, when someone crosses the street during a don't walk, if one yeah. person does it, then more people do it. Yes. And the more well-dressed that person is, the more likely everyone is to do it too. <laughs> Yeah, yes. like we're so oh stupid. God. Right, if a crazy homeless person, it looks like they're going to cross the street. I'm like, I'm not crossing the street. <laughs> but yes. Yes. Wow. Um, okay, You're so You're already then, blowing my mind with this. Another, you know how like you often hear when you talk about the pay gap that, yes. well, oh my God. women tend to choose jobs that happen to be low pay, like yeah. teachers or nurses or secretaries right. or whatever. Yeah. But the truth is, those jobs only become low paying once women start doing them. So historically, oh. secretaries, for instance, were men. That's why we have secretary of state and all this stuff. Like they were men. Uh -huh. And then, you know, when circumstances change, like if men go off to war or whatever, and then women have to do yeah. something, then, <laughs> then so it becomes low paying. Yes. Because yes. If, it's, if a woman can do it, it's seen as not that valuable. 
I feel like I heard the same thing about nursing, that the nursing has gone up, the pay scale has gone up, now that men right. are. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ah. So it's not that women choose okay. jobs. Okay, I'd that like are to invite pain. all the men to join the therapy field. <laughs> right? You guys would be great. Come here. The water's fine. Drive yeah. up the pay scale a little bit. Because I'm sick and tired of getting job offerings for $15 an hour. I'm not kidding. And then I go to Target and they say, now accepting, now offering 16 And I bet you don't need a master's degree to work at Target. That's insane. I'm not fucking kidding when I say it's $15 an hour. You have to have a master's degree. And this is the state of California. That makes me sick. <laughs> sick. Sick. Okay. Um, even like the way we label things, like, you know, how we think of the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. That's oh, what yeah. They're called. But like, that's because those are like materials that people think of as masculine. But at the same yeah. time, they, like they could have called it the Pottery Age or right. the Textiles Age. Right. But they didn't. And they were saying how like art, if a man does it, um, it can sell for like $86 million at an auction. But if a woman does it, it's like the tablecloth you get at the fucking fair. Right. <laughs> like the bazaar, yeah. the church 100%. parking lot uh-huh. festival. Yeah. What do they call it? Like, um, oh, what do they call that kind of folk art? Oh, yeah. Folk art. But if a guy does it, it's like... Um, mm-hmm. Native American, mm-hmm. <laughs> indigenous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, then, okay, another thing is how oh, like... <laughs> that's so true. There'll be like master beaters from South America who make these master amazing tappers, which yes. does sound like I did hear it as soon as you said it. I heard it. I heard it as she soon says, as master you repeated beater. Master <laughs> Beater. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm still the person who's going to giggle when you say turn, turn to page 69. So whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, and they still like, they're like, oh, this is folk art that is yeah. sold at the airport kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But, oh my God. Okay. So true. Yeah. Another thing is like mm, when a man has a passion, let's say he's super into like um, music and buys a lot of vinyl records. Yeah. And he goes out and buys them. It's like, that's his interest in music. He, like, can't get enough of uh-huh. it. But when we go out and buy stuff, we love shopping. Right. Right? So, like, we focus yeah. on what he buys. We focus on <gasps> how the we act shop. Of bu- wow! And, like, he buys a car. He has an interest in cars. He's not, like, addicted to spending like we are. And if you bought a bag... You're addicted to spend. Wow. Even though the resale so value of a purse would be far more than a resale value of a car. Correct. So wow. we, we like, like I said, we like pathologize the interests of women or diminish them. Wow. And that is problem. Okay. This is the main one that I was like, oh my God, this is bonky. Okay. Surprisingly, we don't murder more people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the mood. I'm just going to be on I'm going like, to be on I kind of want to murder somebody <laughs> after hearing all this. That's just a joke. That is not a threat. <laughs> There's no known target. Okay, get this. So. Just the patriarchy. Computers. That used oh, no. to be a job. You could be yeah. a computer. Yes, computer. Right. Yes. But because it was sort of like boring and rote and like you would just be doing the same easy equations constantly, it was a job that was mostly fit for women or disabled people or like the total dregs of society. That's who could do oh be computers. And, um, but then when they made a computer, like the first sort of basic one, yeah. they had to tell people what this was all about. And so they would talk about it as like, you know how we would say horsepower for a car? They would do yes. like this has like ten girl girl hours. <gasps> or, <laughs> no, yeah, like ten girl years. A no, ca- yeah, a kill a girl. No, was I was like I honestly I was like yeah yeah I've seen um, hidden figures I know about these I had. I, I was, you know how a joke is like really good if like the punchline surprises you and like you're expecting one thing, you get yeah. something else. This is that in a story. I was expecting you to be like something about, I had no fucking clue. You were going to tell me that there was a word right. that we used. This is, 
Now I understand why you made a face when we started telling me the story of like, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh. I have to now steal I myself for it. A kill a girl equals 1,000 hours of calculating. Um, and then... <laughs> this is a horse <laughs> Kill a girl! When oh. programming a Kill computers. a girl might be my new roller derby name. <laughs> yeah. Kill a- I've graduated from serial killer to kill a girl. <laughs> I like it. That's it's fucking insane. hilarious. It's awesome. But so sad. Okay, so <laughs> then as like computers improved and then they could do more complicated tasks, um, then guys were like, bluh, bluh. like we, the women were programming them and now oh. they had to be like, uh oh, we need men to do this because this is actually like really complicated and great. So the <sighs> women had to train the men who would become their bosses because the, me- the job became more prestigious. So then men I'm had to sick. do it. They did a I'm campaign. Sick. Like, we I'm need men. sick. Could you imagine training them? Mm-mm. And you talk about, um, you, th- you don't think there was some mansplaining going on in those training sessions? Can you even? Can you even? Well, actually. Well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, where does yeah. a mansplainer get his water? <laughs> From a well, a well actually. actually. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, burn it down. Let's go on Snap. Take it. Anyway, we have a guest today. Yay. Is it a man? We had her on the show actually before for her book, Hype. And she has a new book called The Ultimate Kid's Guide to Being Super Healthy, What You Need to Know About Nutrition, Exercise, Sleep, Hygiene, Stress, Screen Time, and More. Yes. It's really a fun, cute book that I kept going on to her about how like I kept learning things it was embarrassing like it's meant for kids but like you know it was talking about digestion and sleep and yes. what your brain does when you're looking at a screen all kinds of stuff it was really fun I think books with information that we tend to learn as adults because like we have no other option that are written for children yeah are the best way to learn mm-hmm. concepts in new ways as adults and really like make them stick like yeah I, I love like self-help books and psychology books that are written for children because like it'll teach you I love this yeah this she's what a, we need to teach kids she's a physician she's a surgeon I mean she's amazing and so impressive she's also a brainiac she wore her nerdy by nature shirt to the interview oh. which is so cute oh, I love it yeah so we love Nina Shapiro and I think you guys if you have kids or know somebody ultimate kids guide to being super healthy is a gem and wonderful and her book hype is really good it's about like you know, exaggerated claims and myths and stuff that we all believe in. Yep. Anyway, welcome to the show, Nina. Oh, and happy holidays. Happy New Year. We'll be back. Yes. Don't worry. We're just taking a breather. Just a, all little, right. just a little Christmas break. Welcome, Nina. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I am psyched because I just finished your new book, The Ultimate Kid's Guide to Being Super Healthy. Listen. How come you never rest on your laurels? <laughs> like you thank nonstop. You. Well, thanks for reading it. Um, you know, this is, I, I oftentimes write because I feel like I need to. I feel like the information needs to get out there. And, you know, when I'm working with kids all the time, which I do for a living, um, and especially, you know, in this past year and a half with this crazy pandemic, I really felt that, you know, kids are kind of getting the short shrift of all this. They know more than we think they know, but they're getting sort of little bits and pieces of information. They incorporate it. That makes them really stressed, rightly so, makes them really anxious. So let's give them the real information in words that they can understand, not sugarcoating anything, but just giving them the facts and they want it. It reminded me of even like, I remember on Mr. Rogers, he would talk about how like kids can handle stuff. You just have to be honest and give them the scoop. And I think that's so true, but we always like end up condescending to them and just the old, like, because I said so. Right. Your book is like an antidote to (laughs) that problem because, you know, we're busy over here and we just think like, just do it. Just eat your vegetables. But you actually say, here's why. Right. And like, I think I read that you 
had watched a documentary and you felt like there was some stuff kids needed to learn. I love a documentary. Isn't it funny how they get your wheels turning like that? They do. I mean, it was literally that night. It was fed up that I was watching. And I, you know, it was just sort of this aha light bulb moment of, oh my gosh, why can't we teach that to eight-year-olds or six-year-olds? And, you know, why wait until adulthood to understand how things work in our bodies? Well, that and- was what was bonkers. I learned so much from your book. <laughs> Thank you. For real, because we don't really learn, like, the details of why we ought to do what we ought to do. No, no. I mean, even even doctors, like we're not learning about how sleep works. I mean, there's not really a, a designated class in medical school to sleep science or, you know, even stress. I mean, we'll learn little things here and there, but just, you know, why is this? How does it work? And I think, you know, especially for kids, we tend to discount things. So, you know, I hear a lot in my office, like kids are scared. You know, certainly I'm a medical person, so they're going to, you know, they should be scared of me. Um, But then I I sort of tease it apart. Okay, well, what are you scared of? What are you scared about? And, you know, and then they actually, they usually have a list. And, And then we'll go through point by point. Well, I'm scared of needles. I'm scared of this. I'm scared of that. And then, you know, they're usually different ages when people are, when kids are scared of different types of things. So, you know, we can address it point by point instead of just saying, don't be scared. It's going to be fine. That's not helpful. That's not going to make them not scared if we say, don't be scared. Yeah. Um, like whenever but, my yeah. kid got the vaccine, um, he he hates needles. Sure. But then when we talked about, like, it's kind of like cost-benefit <laughs> analysis when right. you're like, but here's the upside. Right. And he was right. down with that. And it's like they get it. that, that you, It's a trade-off. It hurts for a little bit, but you avoid this worse outcome. Yeah. And also to acknowledge like, you know what? I don't like needles either. They hurt. Yeah, man. Yeah. So like, they're like, cause they don't think that we adults experience pain or fear or stress or worry. They just think it's for them. Like, and so if you sort of put it on yourself too, and then they can look at it, wow, you know, you're a human too. You actually, <laughs> you know, experience pain and fear. Um, I think they'll feel, be- feel better about it mm-hmm. and not feel so sort of put upon that we're sort of doing all this stuff uh, to them. Yeah. And there is a rhyme and reason. Like it's not just to torture them. Um, I really love that you included a chapter on stress because that's another thing we don't really think kids have to deal with. Yeah. And so you're really sort of honoring the fact that they're fully formed people. Yes. And well, how did you decide to do that? Why did you think that was important? So, you know, it was tricky because, you know, I didn't want to make light of it because, you know, some children really suffer from anxiety disorders. Um, But I wanted to acknowledge that they have these feelings that are uncomfortable and stress in children is not necessarily expressed or understood the same way it would be in an adult. It's very easy for us to say to our friends and family, I am so stressed. Mm -hmm. Um, Children don't usually say that, but they are stressed. They may, they may just be acting out. They may be bullying at school. They may be not getting along at home. They may be more withdrawn. So there are a lot of different ways. But I think if we recognize these behavior changes and acknowledge them and normalize them for kids, I think kids are oftentimes feeling that they should be happy all the time and they should be engaged and and getting along with everybody and not having any issues. And they feel a lot of pressure to do so. But to say to them, listen, it's normal to feel this way and maybe we can talk about it and see how you can approach it and deal with it and feel comfortable expressing your feelings as opposed to just saying, oh, this is bad, so I shouldn't be sharing this and I should hide it and maybe I can express it in other ways and act out in other ways. And it's unhealthy. And then it really just builds up until they're, you know, teens. And then and then where are we? <laughs> Have you noticed sort of a shift at all? Um, amongst your patients in terms of that stress or anxiety manifesting physically? Absolutely. I mean, for a while, I mean, I'm a surgeon, but for a while, and you know, it's still going on. I feel like I'm a psychiatrist at work because a lot of the issues I'm seeing for children are not physical. They're physical, but they're related to stress. 
So I see a lot of, you know, pain, you know, throat pain, ear pain, ringing in the ears, um, throat clearing, stuffiness that's not really anything. So a lot of the headaches. Um, so I'm seeing so much stress in, you know, in young kids, you know, this could be as young as three or four up, you know, and then very commonly in teenagers, they are so stressed and, you know, Zoom school, everything um, back, you know, re-entry. There, there's so much stress and anxiety and they pick up on it at yeah. all. Even the kids that don't, that don't even understand the words, they can tell in adults, you know, if the parents are stressed or the adults around them are stressed. Yeah, because we like to rely on this idea that kids are resilient, which they can be, and, but as almost like a free pass to not focus mm-hmm. on what they might yeah. be dealing with, right? Yeah. yeah, and just move on and just sort of be a happy kid and let us do the worrying and don't mind us. We'll, we'll just we'll just stress for you. But but they they incorporate it a lot. Well, I assume one of the ways that they might deal with it is through um, escape, which we all do, um, and the screens. And you include a lot about screen time. Um, we as adults do a lot of hand wringing about how much time is too much, what, whether it's harmful or not. How did you approach it? What was your sort of take? So my take was, you know, similar to, you know, I don't like needles either. I think to first of all acknowledge that we like our screens too. Yeah. <laughs> and adults, you know, it's, you know, I've caught myself, you know, scrolling through Instagram, telling my kids to get off of their screens. Right. So, you know, we're guilty of it as adults. So I think first to acknowledge, you know, it's hard for me sometimes to put down my phone. It's hard for me to, you know, turn, you know, power down and, you know, have a little downtime without a screen. So so I think then kids can all of a sudden see that, wow, it's not just us being told what to do. Um, but I think for kids, they should understand, first of all, the good that screens have been. You know, they saved education for the last 18 months, as terrible as it was to be home on Zoom school. What if we didn't have that? Mm-hmm. That would have been, you know, even more devastating. So there yeah. is a lot of good to screens. Um, a lot of the games are very good. A lot of the communication is very good if it's done safely. Um but I think for they, they do need to understand that their brains are growing, their brains are developing, and that the passivity of being on a screen and receiving information as opposed to reading or interacting with other people is so sort of stunting to their the growth of their brains that I think, you know, they need to hear that. And when you talk about it, it's sort of like this is your brain on screens. How do you conceptualize that even to adults? Because I don't think we know what screens are even doing to our brain. Like, how does that make sense? I think, I think we have to sort of do a little literal uh, experiment. And, you know, I talk about this in a, in the book, like, you know, have a timer and have your child go, you know, and you can do this as well as an adult, you know, go on your favorite site or go on your favorite game and, you know, and then guess how long you were on for. And, you know, everybody, you know, major underestimation of how much time they're actually on. Oh, that was three minutes. No, that was 30 minutes. So (laughs) the concept of time just disappears. And again, this is for all of us, but children can can learn about this, that they sort of lose track of time. Mm -hmm. They lose track of the world around them. They don't know what's going on. A perfect example is all, you know, the horrible car accidents and, you know, know, pedestrians getting hit by cars because we're, you know, they're on their screen. They, we are on our screens crossing the street. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just, you know, you tune out the world and, and, you know, there's a there's a great world out there that we're really missing. We feel like we're missing if we're not on our screens, but we're actually missing uh, when we are. Yeah, that was cool in that section where you talked about, like, you would, you would give the kids um, try this activity. So, like, they could go to the park with the screen and do an experiment of, like, what they notice with and without the yeah. phone. I think that's so cool because kids love doing crap like that. <laughs> like they love like <laughs> almost like to see if they can prove you wrong. Right. Right. Sometimes. Like but, I could bring a screen to a park. Yeah. Cool, like I thought it. it was cool. <laughs> I may um, get in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's good. Uh, last time you were on Brain Candy, we were talking about your book Hype, which was tremendous and everyone should read. Um, how many years ago was that? Thirty. That was yeah, two thousand eighteen. Okay. Yeah. How do you feel your job has changed or not since then in the medical field? 
Is this so, just the same? It's well, I mean, hype was for the general public. It's you know, it's written for adults. Um, general medical issues, you know, myth busting as far as right. you know, health fads and wellness. Um, I think the major change has been COVID, as for yeah. everybody on the planet. Um, it's really changed significantly. Um, I would say mainly because for the first year, year and a half, I was seeing a lot of stress-related illness in children. Um, Ian, ear, nose, and throat stuff, but all stress-related, um, which is much more common in adults. You know, the throat clearing and the reflux and the ear ringing, that's all adult stuff. And to yeah. see in young children was, was pretty upsetting. Now that people are out and about again, we are seeing respiratory illnesses with a vengeance more so i you know if i don't i wear a mask obviously at work the entire time but if i don't get some respiratory illness i will be shocked because every kid i'm seeing has like a goopy nose a wet cough they're all sort of back at it um you know just with non covid maybe covid um colds and flus that we're seeing so now it's sort of the extreme change from, you know, ever, you know, what we'd ever seen before. Well, and hype too was about these exaggerated claims and sort of myths and things. I feel like that's been such a big problem in the last two years with people, um, like all these doctors say this thing, but like my brother-in-law at the, you know, Christmas dinner told me this other thing and then they'll weigh them like equally or yes, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Um, does that ever get frustrating to you? It is beyond frustrating. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really frustrating um, because, you know, I do try to be nice. Um, I'm not <laughs> I a do not. nice person. <laughs> At work, you know, to patients because, you know, initially, you know, when, va- you know, main thing has been vaccines. Obviously. Yeah. What do you, what do you do to like, I talk about it. So <laughs> initially, you know, when the vaccines were first rolled out, you know, I got mine on day two in this country. I, I mean, remember you best. tweeted, I would get one in my eyeball. I would. It's like me too. More. I've had three doses. I'll get three more, um, whatever need, whatever it takes, wherever. Um, so you know, at first I could understand that it was, it was brand new and nobody yeah. knew, but you know, I was very vocal about, well, I got it and I'm, you know, my family, yes. it, so I, you know, I trusted enough for myself and my family and my close friends. Um, and you know, I would have, you know, reasonable discussions with people as time went on. Um, you know, it was a very clear demarcation with those who, um, were not just sort of concerned and thinking about it and wanting information, but people that were just like, I'm not getting that jab or that, you know, that crazy vaccine, that experimental, that toxin, you know, all these nonsense buzzwords. Um, so, so I, you know, sometimes I'll get into it. It depends. Typically now I just, you know, they just need to keep their mask on. And they need to get tested. You know, we have very strict rules in our hospital. You know, it's it's stricter than Olive Garden. I'm sorry that, you know, we won't do a procedure on anybody who hasn't had a test in the past 24 to 48 hours. No exceptions unless it's a life and death emergency. So mm-hmm. that sort of gives us a little bit of a buffer in a hospital that if you're coming in for any sort of procedure, regardless of your vaccine t- status, you need to be tested. Um, you know, there'd been a few outlying health outlier health care workers, including at our institution, who have refused to wear masks and refused to get the vaccine. They've made it to, you know, they've become viral on on social media. Yeah, uh, but that's that's the you know extreme minority. I think most of us are pretty. Yeah, know. it's the noisiest, but it's not as big as they yeah. make it seem. Yeah. Um, Yes, I really admire the way that instead of getting hung up on the ways in which you could be cynical and jaded, you're still trying to educate and inform and inspire people to take better care of themselves, including children now. Um, And I really feel inspired by it myself because sometimes, you know, it can bog you down and it can feel hopeless. So I appreciate what you're doing. Um, One of the things that I was thinking about when I was reading this stress chapter was about how I do see it a little bit more, but I'm hoping it grows is um, maybe in schools, including like mindfulness practices and, you know, just different like 
breathing stuff yeah. because they do focus so much on athletics, which is so important, exercise and stuff. But I wish they would do a little bit more in the, with the mind as well. Do you see any of that? Some of the schools around, certainly this is Los Angeles. Yeah, man. So, you know, yoga starts here. <laughs> right. so, so I do know a lot of schools, even preschools, That's so good. who do a little bit of yoga or mindfulness exercises or breathing exercises with the kids. And it's something that, you know, to, to prevent, it, you know, you think of it as preventative also. You know, you can't just do those mm. kinds of breathing exercises when you're feeling anxious or stressed. It has yeah. to be sort of a regular basis so you have those tools to go to as opposed to just waiting until the moment. So thankfully, I think a lot of schools are incorporating it and it takes, it takes five or 10 minutes. You know, we're not talking Mm. about like two hours of, you know, taking away from math time. Yeah. (laughs) No, I love it. Just create the habit a little bit. Um, okay. So on brain candy, we always end up talking about poop for some (laughs) reason. It's just what happens. And we, I noticed in your book, this isn't about poop, but it was about pee. What are you telling me? You said it's basically blood. What? What do you oh. mean? No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you're like, what? <laughs> let's just break it down. Yeah. You drink water. Okay. okay. It goes into your, you drink a glass of water, it goes into your stomach, right? Mm-hmm. Then it goes into your intestines, right? Then your blood vessels absorb some of the water right? And then some of the water goes into your poop, right? Right. So, but some of your blood vessels go to something called your kidneys, right? So these kidneys, these little things, they look like (laughs) little fists, uh, you know, the blood goes into the kidneys and then the kidneys are like little coffee filters Yeah. and they filter out all the crap from your blood. Well, not the crap. Right. Right. (laughs) And so that to go, you know, that filtered blood is urine and that's what goes into your bladder and that's what you pee out. So that is amazing. Filtered. So there should not be any blood right. cells. <laughs> there is, you probably have an infection or yeah, a whole, trouble you know, brewing. Or a whole thing. Um, <laughs> there's trouble. There should not be any white blood cells or red blood cells no. in your urine. Um, but urine is filtered from your blood. That blew my mind. Yeah. I'm telling you. A lot of things did. Just like what the heck, why fiber is important. That blew my mind. Right. And what a great tip you gave for people, kids especially, who are having trouble like learning how to swallow pills. What are you telling me about the ice cube? That is new information. (laughs) So, yeah. So, I I, the medicine chapter was fun because... Um, my kids are actually pretty good at taking medicine. It hasn't been an issue except for one of my kids when they were young, meaning like 18 months, it was one of those like spewing it out right in front of us. We tried to hide it in the bottle, you know, (laughs) nothing worked. Um, but for older kids, meaning like, you know, two, three, four to six year olds, even older, if it's a, if they have to take a liquid medicine, a lot of these medicines taste terrible. They're yeah. chalky. They're gross. And it's a high amount. Like sometimes it'll be like a, two tablespoons and it's yeah. really, really nasty. So I give them some tips. So one thing is if you have to take it, you can freeze your taste. Oh bottle, yeah, that's when, right. right? So, so like just one. suck on an ice cube or like, yeah. little, like an icy chips or ice pop in your mouth. And then, um, and then when you take the medicine, it's kind of almost numb back there. That's right. That blew my mind. Cool, huh? Yeah. Swallowing the pills. That's how I learned to swallow a pill. I was really bad at swallowing a pill, even as a young adult. Yeah. So I used to hide it in a little piece of cheese or something like right, that. Like a dog. <laughs> I know. We all have our little tricks for stuff. Yeah. It does. It's like a mind over matter type thing, but I don't know. I just feel like I just read a a book for elementary school kids, but I'm learning too. And that's why it's so fun to read with our kids and like the illustrations that Nicole did really cute too. Thank you. Aren't you excited? Great. I love her. Yeah. She's great. The whole thing, just such a great thing. Yeah, I tried to sneak in, well, not sneak in, but, you know, there's information in there that I know that a lot of adults don't Yeah, And, you know, that sort of empowers the adults too, because, you know, when they're saying, you know, just do this because it's good for you, or do this because I said so, or do this because you're annoying me, um, it gives them some information too as to why they are unknowingly telling their kids to do all this stuff. Yeah, it really is empowering. And I love that you don't talk down to kids. It's just like super fun and um, and informative. 
I, I'm sure I asked you this last time you were here, but we'll do it again. What do you keep in the trunk of your car? Oh my God. You did ask me that last time. <laughs> oh my God. And I'm like, so bad. I always keep a couple copies of my book. Yes. As you should. <laughs> Cause you never know, right? Know. You never know who you're going to meet. So I always have a couple copies of, yes. of, uh, of the ultimate kids guide and hype. You never know. Um, I have water in my trunk and you know, and, and that's, a, I'm so bad. I live in Southern California. I should have like an entire week supply of earthquake kit. <laughs> right, for real. Kit. My trunk is like spotless. Nice. I love that. <laughs> well, yes, but I should probably have a little more safety. I know. Stuff. Right. Do you mean to troubleshoot? He need like a, a go bag for an earthquake. Something. I should, but you know, we have a cluttered house. So I think I like an uncluttered car. Okay. Balance. I get it. Right. Well, I hope everybody reads it. The Ultimate Kids Guide to Being Super Healthy. Such a great, would make a great Christmas gift and just perfect for all, any family. Really one well done. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm glad Thanks you for coming on the show and for wearing your ner- ner- nerdy by nature. nature. I have to get some more ma- merch. I see I'm behind on the- <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, we just won't quit with our merch. I love it. I love it. I'm going to get some more. Thank you so much. Thank you.